Good morning coders. So today I'm going to show you all a little bit about how to start working on WebLab and making your own websites using HTML and CSS, uh, which is hypertext markup language and cascading style sheets. Fancy acronyms for computer scientists. All right, so when you're on your uh, main homepage on code.org, you go to the create button at the top right. And go ahead and click view all projects. Then when you see this view full list button, you're going to go ahead and click that and it'll give you a few more options to select. You're going to want to select the web lab from uh, the projects list. When you do this, it makes a new web lab project for you, which you can get back to from your home from your projects list. Um, but this is where we're going to be learning how to make our websites. So the first thing about HTML is they include open and close tags. So think about how parentheses work. So first I have to open a parenthesis, and then I have to close a parenthesis for it to work properly. Similarly, in HTML, we have something called an open tag and a close tag. So this is called a, a header tag, and I've just opened it, and then I closed it with this second symbol here. So a lot like a parenthesis where you had to open it, put your content, and then close it. The same thing applied with the HTML tag. So this header tag, um, I put an open tag, put my content, and then closed it. Next up, we can try to make another tag, a paragraph tag. The paragraph tag is where you put most content on a website. Uh, it's, if you have a lot of text, it usually will go into a paragraph tag like this. So now that I have a header tag and a paragraph tag, um, I have a little bit of HTML on my website. Let's say I wanted to do two tags at once, maybe using the bold tag. If you were to do this with parentheses, if we had two different kinds of parentheses, let's say I had an open parenthesis and then an open square bracket, content goes here, then I would put an open close square bracket and then a close regular parenthesis. It wouldn't make sense if I did a close normal parenthesis and then a bracket, right? Because suddenly my content wouldn't work. Same thing applies with HTML tags. If I do a P tag, and then a, a bold tag. I have to close the bold tag before I close the p tag. Suddenly my paragraph text has become bold. If I put this on the outside, uh, it would break. So you can see in our editor here these pink, um, this pink highlighting means that your code is something is wrong with your code. So we're going to put back the close tag, bold tag, before the close paragraph tag and that'll fix up our website. I'm going to delete that now. Finally, a brief introduction into CSS or style sheets. So you can see at the top here we have a style sheet reference to be style.css. So over here on our file browser you can see two different files. So index.html is where we are. This is our main web page. Style.css is what gives style to our website. So these things are called selectors. So this P tag is selected and then it's given the color property of black. Let's say I wanted to change that text to blue. I can change the color of the P tag here and you'll see now this P tag is blue. If I gave another P tag, if I create another P tag, it will still be blue. You might have to refresh and save if you're not seeing uh, updates from your thing. Notice I have an error here because that's why this is pink. I forgot to close my p tag. There we go. Now the errors are gone. So my content uh, in p tags is still blue. That's because the CSS selector selected the paragraph tag and it made every single one of them blue. Let's say I didn't like my h1 being bold and instead I wanted to change the color to gray. Simple as that. Now all future H1 tags that I make will also be gray. 
So that is a brief introduction into HTML and CSS. You have open and close tags, which is, helps organize the content of our page. And then we have CSS selectors and their properties, which are how we style a website. Finally, when you're done on WebLab making your website, you can click Share at the top, and it'll give you a link to visit your website on the World Wide Web. Remember, uh, we can't share any personally identifiable information on our websites. This gets shared to the whole world, so make sure that what you're sharing is appropriate and doesn't reveal information you don't want the whole world to know. Thanks, and I hope you have fun making your first web pages.